And to me, that's really what chain abstraction is, right? Enabling developers to be able to build like on any chain without worrying about the nuances such as like the, you know, the different consensus mechanism, what language it's written in. And chain abstraction from like an end user standpoint, I think kind of has always stayed the same. I think as an end user, you never really cared so much about what chain was something was built on. Like if you wanted to do a swap or go from this asset to that asset, I don't think you ever really cared whether that DEX was built on Solana or Ethereum. You just wanted that asset, right? It was due to like a technical limitation that you ended up, you know, caring so much about what blockchain it's on. But we, you know, look towards the future with better interop technology like Axler. As a user, you'll care less and less. You'll know less and less about like what chain it's being run on. In the 1980s, you could send an email, but it wasn't easy. Um, I simply remove telephone jack from the telecom socket and plug it into this box here, the modem, from the modem and plug it in where the telephone was. And it's now telling me to phone up the main press cell computer. Um, so it's a very simple connection to make. Extremely simple. Does this seem familiar? Using Web3 today is like sending an email in the 80s. Cumbersome, complicated and counterintuitive. There's a better way. Secure, scalable, universal connectivity. Axelar enables users to interact with any asset, any application, on any chain with one click. Axelar powers the cross-chain future. What will you build? Going forward, the big goal for Axelar uh, in particular and the protocol is to really get into the model where anybody can get connectivity at a fraction of a cost. Okay. So today, Axelar is connected, you know, over um, 65 chains. It's the most of any interoperability protocol outside of Cosmos. Uh, and it connects heterogeneous protocols, so all kinds of blockchains with all kinds of consensus mechanisms and routes between them. Uh, so far, you know, it's still been, uh, you know, relatively let's say, challenging to integrate new networks, right, because of the protocol, even though it's, it's the most scalable we want to bring it down even further. Right? We want to enable anybody to plug and play with a fraction of a cost of what it takes today with a fraction of a time that it takes today without having to call any vendor, without having to call any support. And so that's really the big focus for us over the next um, couple of years is to really kind of uh, put Axel as a platform in place to be an open stack of interoperability. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Zen Lounge. In this video, I'm going to talk all about the Axler project. As you can see, it's doing pretty well today. It's almost up 13%. It's up above a dollar once again. I have high hopes for this project. You can see that it once did hit uh, $2.30 just a few months ago. So I think with everything that I'm going to show you in this video, that we could definitely hit you know, the all-time high of $2.30 again based on everything that's happened, plus much, much more. So Axler, I, I suggest that you start with watching this video I made two weeks ago about Project Guardian, uh, connecting all the dots between the monetary, monetary Authority of Singapore and all the big banks. They're currently doing pilots and testing, including JP Morgan, many other huge banks that have tested Axler's technology and implemented a plan to implement Axler's technology. So quickly going back to the chart, as you can see, it's even going up as I'm making this video. It's up to a dollar and six cents. It's up fifteen percent for the day. Uh, by the way, if you check on markets, it's available on almost every major exchange, including Binance and Coinbase. So it's very easy for users to get access to it. If you're a DeFi user, it's available on MetaMask via Uniswap. It's also on Osmosis if you're a Cosmos user. It's also on Kraken, basically every big exchange. If we look at the all time, well, let's look at the chart. So it hit all time highs in March. Since March, they've been slamming so much news down the Twitter timeline. There's been so much happening, including in May, they announced that a major bank was testing uh, asset tokenization with Axler's technology and using it for cross-chain basically interoperability. 
you can see it right here. Axler is critical infrastructure for institutional adoption. This is a Deutsche Bank part of Singapore. They join Singapore's asset tokenization project and they select Axler to be one of their developers and partners. Huge, huge banks. This is announced in May. On top of that, we also have the uh, partnership with Celestia. So right here, Celestia and Axler team up to grease up the wheels of new chains. I have right here. Axler provides the tech Axler provides the technology to abstract away the chain. So this is the official article. I'll put it in the description below, but there's been so much happening, including on the front page of uh, the state of the XRP ledger report from Missouri. It's also uh, the Axler integration was highlighted. This just happened recently. So, so much has been announced since we reached all temp highs. And uh, like you, like I just shared in the recent clip, they're they're planning to build this network for years and years to come. Part of this pilot test, if you watch my YouTube video, so right after this, go over and watch the next YouTube video. This project that Axler is involved in is so big that global policymakers are stepping in, and also the IMF. The all-time low for Axler, if we look at the chart, at the all-time low, it looks like it's around uh, 31 cents back in October of 2023. So still only up about three, four, uh, three and a half X. So it's still very early. Remember, this is not financial advice. I'm just sharing research that I've been doing. Uh, it is up 15% today. So everybody have an awesome day and peace. So we, as you said, operate in a hub and spoke model, right? So what it allows us to, to say is that any connection that's connected to Axler is automatically interoperable with everyone else in the ecosystem, okay? So no other connections need to be made, no other maintenance needs to be made. The protocol knows how to translate and route the messages. And so what that means is that for every connection, it's really linear amount of work to get the new network interconnected with, uh, you know, dozens or thousands of chains. OK, uh, the alternative extreme of this is what's known as a peer to peer topology where everybody is interconnected with everyone else. Yeah. Now, everything is interconnected with everything else is fine if you're talking about five or 10 networks. But you're look, really looking at the quadratic number of connections that you have to manage and maintain across it. And so it doesn't really scale if you're talking about hundreds of connections. Right. Uh, the management overheads go higher. The engineering overheads go higher because you have to manage everybody in a pairwise way and kind of verify, you know, one chain with respect to another chain. Uh, security risks have to be managed in a pairwise way. If one chain goes down, you have to, you know, you can't just suspend something at a hub like Axel or you're going to have to go and like do something manual for every chain it's interconnected with. Right. So um, it, it, it's very hard to scale. And if you look at the internet, internet is not made up of everybody talking directly with each other. It's made up of kind of big hubs of connectivity that have some peer-to-peer -to -peer topology in the middle. Right. And so I think this is the similar um, you know, philosophy that we took with Axler. I think on the blockchain space, this problem of management and cost of connectivity is even higher. Right. That's why we don't have everything that's connected with everyone else by default because the costs are higher to both connect it and then maintain it. And so I think hubs are really the most economical, beneficial, and scalable way that we know of today. And I expect there potentially will be other hubs in the future.